Today I have a Dollar Tree flower box that you can use all year long. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Alright, we're going to start off with a 4x6 little house shaped frame. Two of these from Dollar Tree. And we're going to use four of these little picket fence pieces. And here's the little coat on the back. And we're not going to need the strings, so I can take those off. We're going to use some paint stir sticks. Mine are 12 inches long. I have some of these that I've had for a long time um, that I got from Dirt Cheap. I'm going to use those now. And then I'm going to use some smaller popsicle sticks. I'm going to use some antiquing wax and wipes. But you can use any type of watered down paint that you like. A paint brush. And I'm just going to start off by removing these. If you're going to do this, go ahead and if you want to take the time, remove your staples also, but I didn't bother with it. Then we're going to open up our frames, take the backing, the glass, the paper, and these little tabs that hold it down. I'm going to take all those out. Sometimes they'll just pull out with your fingers. Uh, sometimes you got to use some pliers. So, you know I like my rustic look. We're going to achieve that look with a little antiquing wax and a wipe. Now, like I said a minute ago, just go ahead and use whatever brown paint you have. Even Dollar Tree has a variety of paints. Just add a little water to it. And then the goal is to be able to see the stain, the um, texture of the wood underneath the stain. So you don't want to use like a, a brown paint, and I'm going to show you that shortly. You'll see the difference um, using some type of a antiquing wax or a watered down wash will give you a you know a rustic look where you can still see the wood grain so I'm going around all of my edges and trying to get in between the slats also y'all I've got a new goal my new goal is to reach 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st of this year I'm really excited about that I feel like it's possible I have lots of people who view my videos and give such wonderful feedback and I would really love to change some of you viewers into subscribers. Being a subscriber gives you notifications of all my updates, all my new videos and tabs and the community posts so we get to talk there too. Plus I do giveaways pretty often and you don't want to be missing out on that. Okay so if you see here in between there are some little like splintering or little rough spots. You can just go ahead and fold down a piece of sandpaper and mine did come from Dollar Tree. Fold it down and just run it right through those cracks and smooth it down. Now you could do this beforehand, it'd probably be best, but I did not do that. You can see the little, I don't know if you would call that like a backer or whatever that holds those pieces together. We're just going to go across those little beams in the back with some brown paint. I didn't water this part down because I like it looking like it is recessed and if you use a darker color it will kind of push that to the back. Visually anyway. Okay so this is what it looks like if you just use a regular brown paint and I think this is Teddy Bear by Folk Art this brown color and you can certainly do it this way if you would like. I'm just doing this because I know that the arrangement I'm going to do, you will not be able to see the pickets on the inside of the flower box, but on the offhand chance that at a later season when I change this out to something different, you might be able to see down in the box. So I think it would be best if I just go ahead and cover up everything that's on the inside so that you don't see it. Now see the top is where it's painted and on the bottom is where you can see I watered it down with a little bit of, of water in that teddy bear paint. So I did that intentionally so you can see the difference. Now we got to attach these together and I'm trying to get my spacing right so you can see here that they are not exactly squared meaning they do not sit flat and those pickets are not spaced apart uh, exactly. So in order to try to make up for that I want my box to sit flat so I'm standing them up you know kind of supporting them with the ruler to make sure I have a flat surface on the bottom and just using some popsicle sticks that are colored that I painted and to go across there now to make sure both sides are the same I'm just gonna stack them on top of one another and we're gonna follow that same process add your glue on the bottom and the glue on the top and we'll have nice 
flat edge picket fence pieces. If you can't find these picket fence pieces, you could also just make your own. It'll take a little more time, but you can definitely make your own from popsicle sticks. Or you could use the little pallets that you get from Dollar Tree. It'll give it a little different look, but it'll be okay. Now here are our house frames. You can go ahead and paint those whatever color that will match. And I'm just using these little pieces here. Now these are actually garden stakes where you can, you know, put carrots and peas and whatever you have in your garden. But I've had them for a long time and I thought I would go ahead and use them here in case you don't have stir sticks. Grab something that maybe you've thrifted or that you already have in your stash that you haven't used yet. So we're gonna just go with what we have. I'm going along the inside edge of that frame to decide how long I need my pieces to be so that they will fit snugly down into that depression in the frame. I'm going to do it on both sides. And then you can use whatever process you want to use to cut these down. I do have a little a miter box and a saw, and so that's how I chose to cut mine down. I'm going to start with my center piece. I do recommend that you want to use something like maybe a Gorilla Glue or if you have a regular glue stick. If you want this to last a long time, you might want to use something like uh, E6000 to do this. Totally up to you. But I know this probably would not hold up to the weather, you know, outside on your porch if you're using regular glue. So I'm just going to space these out a little bit so that they kind of mimic what we have going on with the little picket fence sides. And then we're going to put little cross beams that are also painted because we want this to look like the fence. And see the fence has it in the back. Now we want that to be the same thing on the both ends of our box. So these are the ends, the tall ends, the tall frame pieces rather. I'm going to trim down these just with my little bull nose pliers. They're also little wire cutters. I'm going to cut those down and then they will fit nicely on the back there. You can still use stir sticks or large popsicle sticks. Whatever you have, go ahead and use that. You may have more than three pieces. If your pieces are thinner, you may have five, you may have four. Whatever you have, just make it work. And then I'm just going to use my hot glue and go across there to make sure that it is secure where I want it to be. And so this is how it's gonna look, all stained and painted. And then do the same thing on the second piece, but in order to get them even, I'm just gonna go side by side, mark them so that I get my planks or my little cross beams in the same spots and everything achieves a nice high-end look. We want this to be pretty and high-end looking. But of course we wanna save money, so this is how we do it. Now we have matching ends for our box and we have our sides done. How are we going to connect these together? We're going to use our tower blocks that we got from Dollar Tree. I got a box a long time ago and I am still using the same box. These make great supports. So we're going to start off by putting our glue down on the side and lining up that side piece. I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom and to the side and place down one of my blocks. It's not necessary for you to paint or stain these, but it is your personal choice. If you would like to, you certainly can. Of course, you wanna hold that for a minute to let the, drew sit, the glue sit up, and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna add your glue there, make sure that it's kind of square and even you can feel that with your fingers. Apply your support, and then we're gonna start working on the other side. I've flipped it over and I'm putting my supports the exact same way that we did on the other side. Very easy. This is also going to be a support for us when we put down our bottom beams so that we have something to hold our foam. Okay, so now we need to see how long we need our bottom braces to be. And we're going to just cut down those popsicle sticks. I'm just measuring against the side here. We're going to cut those down. I'm just using my little 
uh, it's like a box cutter tool that you can get from Dollar Tree and it comes in a three pack. They work very well for this type of thing. Score it on both sides and edges, then you can just twist it and it'll snap off. So there's an option if you don't have a miter box and saw. All right, we're gonna place the first one down there and then we're going to do the next one. Same way, doesn't have to be beautiful and it does not have to be painted. If you're enjoying this video, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up. Now, so to connect those two together, we're going to use some shorter popsicle sticks, which happen to fit wonderfully in the bottom. I'm gonna start off with just three across the bottom, and then I'm going to add a little bit more in there to make sure that it's gonna keep my foam from falling out all over the place. I initially thought that I would use the type of foam that's like a styrofoam, but when I was looking through my stash, I noticed I had a lot more of the, the really fine textured floral foam that you use for live flowers, and I decided to go ahead and just use some of that. If you were to use the, that type of foam for live flowers, you just soak it in water first, and then you put it in something that will not leak, and then you know, go from there. Leave me a comment below if you are enjoying this video. If you've never done another one of my projects but you've been watching, you really should consider doing this one. This one is so inexpensive and it's gonna take you all the way through the year in all of your decor. So Dollar Tree offers two different types of this foam that I was referring to. One of them has four pieces and the other one is one long rectangular piece. It's going to take one piece of the smaller ones and one of the big ones to fill up the bottom of this. I'm just going to glue it down to make sure that my foam does not come out or wiggle around when I'm trying to make my arrangement because I'm going to be putting a lot of flowers in here and really packing them in. Now, follow me on my social media on Pinterest and Instagram. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my thrifted flowers and greenery, and you can certainly get things at the Dollar Tree that are really gorgeous. Mine all came from Goodwill. That's where I thrift my florals. And here's an example of the things I'm gonna be using. Some mini roses, a couple of types of hydrangeas. And these are mm, kind of peachy and pinky color, which I am loving this spring. I'm gonna add in my greenery, one of these big sprigs, cause I only have four, one to each corner, just to kind of hang over and stick out in the sides. You can use ferns for this from Dollar Tree. You could use any type of greenery you like, really. And see, my box came undone, I had to fix it back. That's why you need Gorilla Glue. All right, I'm gonna start in the middle with my tallest flower, and this is gonna be Hydrangeas, they kind of, uh, they look better as they are in nature and they kind of form a ball, like a little floral ball. So I'm gonna try to keep that look when I put all of these pieces in here. I'm gonna keep them kind of domed where the highest part's gonna be in the middle and they'll be a little bit lower on the sides and then I'm gonna add some greenery and those little roses here and there to just give it a little more texture and a little more interest. Don't be afraid to cut down your flowers, your wired stems, to cut leaves off where you need to. That's, that's what it's there for. Get your wire cutters, go to town on it. You can always, if you cut something too short, add a pick to it, glue it, add some floral tape, and fix it right up. So see, I had that one in the corner too low. All right, so you can see right now how it's looking so far. And we're gonna to continue to look at it from all angles and see what we wanna add next. I'm gonna go in the sides and I kinda of wanna do the same thing in the front and back. This is gonna be more of a symmetrical type. You can see how it's domed here. This is a symmetrical type arrangement. We don't have that wild look that I usually go for. We want things to be completely in harmony. With an exception, I do put some things hanging down in the front, just a little bit. So here are these cute little roses. 
I'm going to leave them in bundles of two and three and just add them here and there. They are almost exactly the same color. Now, if you don't like this monotone look, you can certainly use white or yellow. You can use any color that you like. And that same goes for the hydrangeas. You don't have to use pink. Use whatever you can find and whatever it is that you prefer for your decor, of course. I can just see this box for every season already. I have ideas of how I'm going to use it, and I'm so very happy to say that I will be using this box throughout my decorating this year and doing several different arrangements. So be sure that you make one of these boxes so that you can follow along and we can do it together. I'm loving this so far. I wanted to add a little bit of this bluish green because I think that it looks really great with the peach and it gives a little more variety in the greens that we already have in there. See now it's where it's taking it to a more rustic or cottagey look because I'm adding all those other little sweet details into it. I've really kind of gotten away from just, you know, rustic farmhouse. I'm doing a lot more cottage in my house. How are y'all doing your decor this year? Are you changing anything up? Are you going to stick with the same thing? I'm really enjoying the romantic cottagey feel. I'm redoing my bedroom and I'm just really liking adding the flowers and, and some other things to the room. It's just really making it feel so cozy and feminine. And this is what we got so far. What do you think? This is the time to add your final touches. Put in some extra where you need it. Move some things around. Here is our flower box. Isn't this adorable? I absolutely love this. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers who got me to the point that I am now, which is at about 11,300 and such. Be sure you follow me on Instagram so you can watch my daily count to my new goal. I appreciate it so very much. I'd be so happy to see you over there. I would love to be able to cheer each other on. I'd love for you to let me know what your goals are so I can help support you. I would love to do that. Love it, love it. Y'all mean so much to me if you're a viewer and you would like to become part of this YouTube family. It's so easy to subscribe and it is totally free. And I give you all the goodies because I believe in you and I believe in our creativity. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.